Hello and welcome to this video. Um, the purpose of this video is to give you a very quick tutorial of how to set up a Commodore 64 or Vic 20 or PET development environment on the Mac and uh, yeah it works pretty much the same for Linux as well. Uh, the reason for this is because the top IDE for or cross assembler is Windows only because it runs on .NET and I've had uh, sort of, uh, not too good experience running it uh, under Mac using Crossover and Wine and yeah it just doesn't work that well. So I've looked at some other tools and we're going to be using Kick Assembler which uh, I'll put the link to in the description and Visual Studio Code. Okay, there are some other utilities kicking about uh, for making uh, character sets and sprites. Uh, PetMate is a good one. That's good for making uh, screens and backdrops and character sets. So, um, again, I think that's a Java file as well. Right, okay, so first things first, go over to the Kick Assembler page and download. Yep, there is only one download, really, because it's Java and you'll get a kickassembler.zip file in your downloads folder. The next bit we're going to do in the command line, you don't need to sudo or anything like that. Okay, so, as you can see here, first thing I'm going to do is make a temporary folder in my uh, root of my home. So, CD into temp, and then what we're going to do is we're going to unzip the downloaded kick assembler file. So that should be my downloads kick assembler.zip. That's done that. If we look at there, we've got examples, we've got other different files there. I see the one we're really interested in is this one here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that into user local bin. Okay, which will uh, put it into somewhere that's parsed. And so you don't need to uh, sudo in or anything for that. Just uh, we'll go in there. Uh, the next thing, I'm not sure if you really have to do it, but I normally do, is give it executable permissions. Okay, we don't really have to do that. But, well, I don't know. I, I do it anyway. Okay, so that is now there. We can't run it directly because it's a jar file. So you need to make sure you have the Java runtime environment installed on your Mac or Linux uh, machine. Um, I'm not going to go into details about that because uh, there's so many videos of how to do it. It's just a case of downloading it from Oracle and installing it. So to check you've got it on there and it's working, just type Java minus minus a version. And you can see here I've got the uh, Java some Java runtime environment 901. Hey, okay, I'm not sure if it's bang up to being the latest, but it works well enough for this. Okay, so let's test whether the kick assembler is actually able to run. So we'll do Java minus jar, and then we'll point it. Dot jar. There we go, it fires it up and it's obviously complaining that we've not put an input file in. Well, that's fine, that will be done uh, in a minute. Okay, so it's able to run. Now, I'll reiterate again that you can do all this with Linux as well. The paths may be slightly different, but it's certainly able to be done, and I've done it on an Ubuntu machine. Okay, right, so the next thing is the actual coding environment itself. Now, I am a big lover of Visual Studio Code. I use it all day, every day at work. 
Uh, it's, a, it's available Mac, Linux, and Windows. Okay, so we've got a Visual Studio Code window. I'll put a link to it in the description, but it's not difficult to find and it's free. So what we need to do is install an extension, which I believe you do by clicking here. And we'll search the marketplace for kick assembler. Okay, now we get two here, two main ones. Okay, we have this one and this one, okay. Now I have had more luck using this one. It says kick ass C64. Okay, so we'll just click and install there. That is now installed. Okay, so now we need to set our options up for this. So we will go into our preferences and our settings. Okay, and we will pull down the extensions and we'll find Kick Assembler. Okay, so the Java bin is an interesting one. I haven't looked into the debugger yet. We'll do that on another video. Java bin is fine. Java works from anywhere. It's in the path, in the system path. Uh, kick as a jar. So that is our um, jar file that we've just downloaded and moved. So it's oh, local. Now let me just check the case on that. And it is capital K, capital A. That should do. Okay, and a vice. Now, what I've done here, I've I have vice installed, so we can test our um, code. But we need the full part of the executable, not the application dot app folder so what we'll do let's have a look in our terminal and i believe it's in the root applications vice 64 yeah x64 dot app yeah and now in the side of this there's a contents folder there's a mac os folder and there it is x64 let's just hit enter on that yep, that fires vice up so there is our full path to vice so we'll copy that and we'll paste it into here okay let's just give that a save Right, so let's do a quick test and see if it will uh, assemble and build our uh, two kick assembler and run on vice. So let's do a test.asm. And if we look there, you see we've got a nice little logo there. So it's going to be a very quick one. So memory address 1000. I'm not going to do a, a syscall uh, in uh, fake basic on here because I can't be bothered. So as a start, we will ink DO2O, which is the border color, and then just JMP to start. Now we do get some nice um, syntax highlighting or IntelliSense, as what it used to be called. Okay, so start is obviously a label I've put there. So if I put staff, then it will underline that and it will give us an error that it doesn't know what it is. So change it back to start. Same as if one of our um, codes is wrong, JNP. Oh, doesn't like that. JNP not defined. Right, so JNP. Okay, so we'll save that. And what we need to do is invoke the command palette. Uh, on the Mac, it's uh, Command Shift P. And kick, kick ass 64. So we type kick, uh, build and run. Okay, once you've used it once, it, it shoots to the top of the list, which is good. So we will do build and run. 
So, first of all, I'll just flick out the 64 for a minute. There's our output, it passed it. Uh, one pass, output, and it wrote the PRG, test.prg. Okay, you can put commands in to make it write out to a D64 in your assembler code at the beginning, but uh, you can just check out the kick assembler documentation for that. It's got it all in there. And there's how much uh, memory we've used. Not a lot, but six, uh, six uh, bytes there. Okay, back to our 64. Obviously, uh, there's nothing to run because I didn't do a sys command in basic at the top. So we will kick it off manually. That's 406, which is decimal for hex 1000. And there we have it, our standard flashy borders. Okay, so I'll reiterate again. This should all work under Mac and Linux. The uh, command palette uh, shortcut is different on Linux for Visual Studio Code. I think it's Control Shift P for that. But everything else is pretty much the same. Okay, thank you very much, and see you on the next video.